Welcome or welcome back to Robe Trotting. I'm Derek, he's Mike, you're awesome, and today we're gonna to be telling you about a recent trip that we had to the city of Oslo and the things that really shocked us about our time there. So the first thing that surprised us was sticker shock. It meant actually that we didn't have it. Things are definitely expensive in Oslo, but they're expensive in Copenhagen too. And we certainly heard stories about how expensive everything is in Norway and in Oslo in particular, but we really didn't find the land of $18 beers outside of the touristy zones, which is kind of like Copenhagen itself. Don't get me wrong, the alcohol is definitely more expensive there than here in Copenhagen, but other amenities like coffees and things like that were more or less on par with what we're used to here in Copenhagen. Sure, and that may be more expensive than other cities. And if we did a detailed analysis, we would probably find things that are much more expensive in Norway. But overall, coming from a big city in Scandinavia to another big city in Scandinavia, it wasn't really that different. And one thing that really did surprise us, though, is we realized just how much we miss a landscape. <laughs> Any kind of elevation is actually really nice. And I know we've mentioned it in many videos before, but Copenhagen is very flat. In fact, Denmark is the fourth flattest country on the planet, and Norway is, well, it's not. And being able to sit around the harbor and see some nice mountains around us was something that we never realized we were missing, and we maybe just kind of didn't expect it. And in Norway, it was really cool to have some, some elevation. Yeah, our cab definitely got a workout just going around the city to visit some friends in a park and the landscape was nice. Honestly, we're not used to it too because in Philadelphia, it's similar to Copenhagen. It's a flat town down along the coast. So same sort of setup, but yeah, mountains in Oslo, beautiful views around it, stunning. And on top of being stunning, one of the things that really surprised us too is how much nature there is in the city. And one of the coolest things was walking through one of the parks and realizing there's a friggin' waterfall in the middle of the city. You don't really find that in Copenhagen or honestly almost any other city that I've been to. It was amazing to see the nature not only be around the city, but immersed in the city itself. Yeah, and of course there's parks and green spaces in both cities that we've called home in the past, Copenhagen now and Philadelphia before we moved to Europe. But in Oslo, it's almost like they built the entire city around the nature, like some kind of showcase. And it's really stunning. We were definitely shocked by the nature within the city of Oslo. Now, this is something that we've mentioned about Denmark before and that a lot of Americans notice about Denmark, but we were really shocked and the trend continued when we went to Oslo and Norway. And that is that people are very good looking. Now, Scandinavians have a certain aesthetic that a lot of people find nice. And uh, a few people told us before that this is because the Vikings would bring the most beautiful women back from every country and every land that they plundered. Um, so maybe that's the case because the Norwegian Vikings may have done the same thing. And the trend definitely continued when we went to Oslo. Yeah, definitely. If I'm a Philadelphia eight and a Copenhagen five, I'm definitely an Oslo four. <laughs> Another thing that shocked us in Oslo, and we were warned for it, is how hard it is to buy booze. And it was really funny getting off the plane, seeing everybody go immediately to the duty free and get the exact amount of alcohol they are allowed to bring into the country by law so they could bring it with them because it's cheaper there than in the other stores. It's also funny that it's really on the nose as far as how Norway takes care of their monopoly. It's literally called the wine monopoly on the store. So they're not even hiding it like in Philadelphia and Pennsylvania where they call it wine and spirits and make it seem like it's just a casual corner store that happens to be run by the state. And I don't want you to think that we have some kind of problem with alcohol, but another thing that really shocked us and stood out to us was the fact that there's really no public drinking in, uh, in Norway. We're very used to the fact and we love the fact that in Denmark it's perfectly fine to grab a picnic blanket and sit on the, the, the grass in a park and open up a can of beer or a bottle of wine and just sit in public and drink. And that's something that we found out you're not actually allowed to do in Norway. Not the hard way, we didn't have any fines or anything like that, but it was definitely something that surprised us when we asked friends, hey, uh, we'll meet you in the park. Let's grab a, a bottle of wine on the way. And they said, oh, no, you actually can't do that here in Norway. Yeah, speaking of the beautiful landscape, sitting along the harbor, it would be perfect to have some beers with you, but it's a no-go in Oslo. Big surprise for us coming from Copenhagen. Yeah, and if you wanna see other things that have surprised us in this video, it's actually about reverse culture shocks that we experienced in a trip back to Philadelphia when we had been living in Denmark for so long, find out the things that really surprised us. Click here and watch that one now. Thanks for watching, guys. Hi, hi. hi.